Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9GP, and welcome back to another episode of my Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough. Uh, so we're in the off season still with the Austin P. Governors. Um, might let this be the last off season video I have. Uh, just depends on how how far along we get. It's like June 26th, so we're starting to really ramp up recruiting, um, and I'm still learning that it's. It's not something that I'm really 100% strong on right now, but I thought I would, you know, go through some of uh, what I'll uh, look at um, here. Just give you an idea, at least, if, if you're interested in the game or if you're following along, just to give you an idea of what you're up against when you're when you're dealing with the recruiting. It's pretty um, it's a pretty tough system to beat, I think. Uh, with well, if you're a team like us, where you're in like a low prestige. Uh, conference it we're like two stars out of five in terms of prestige so that makes it a challenge for sure and uh, the budget's not that big we can't go out and buy every scouting report we can't really we can't really recruit nationally and those are things though that are you know are realistic really I guess that makes it the challenge that it is and that's why it might even be in my opinion, it might be more fun to take on a smaller prestige school because you do have those kind of limitations. But we'll look at that and a couple other things. And I wanted to start out uh, with uh, a suggestion that one of my viewers made. I think it was Christian. Uh, if you're still watching this video, I took you up on your suggestion. I'm pretty loaded at Power Forward, and um, I think you meant Harriman, the freshman that I just uh, signed this year that he was a good candidate to redshirt and I think you're right uh, he's a potential three star he's not going to get any playing time this year and I think it would be best to give him one more year and uh, I'm going to lose a couple no I'm going to lose three power forwards this year to um, well they're they're seniors so I'm going to lose three power forwards and I've got one returning who's a junior who has one and a half three star potential. I'd like to get him some playing time, but I don't know if he's going to be able to get it this year. Um, and I said, I said four. Am I right about that? Yeah, I am right. It's, so it is. It is uh, probably Greg Edwards will probably be the starter. He's two and a half current with a three and a half star potential, but it, as a senior, that's probably probably as much development as you're going to see from him. But. Um, I'm going to be in trouble, I think, next year with this position. And I've only got two scholarships to give, and I, th I still want to go for a center because Mallet was so disappointing. This um, I don't know if it's just because my assistant coach, his scouting ability has changed or he's not scouting him correctly, but this guy is like... Uh, Unless he really develops over the course of the season and gets a lot of playtime, he's not going to really turn into much. Uh, he's got the size, has some ratings like on the rebounding and defensive side that uh, if he meets his potential would be pretty good. But, man, this guy, I, I'm i really disappointed that I, that I signed him. And uh, I know I've had some suggestions from some of you, some of the – other viewers uh, may have been Christian or somebody else, but maybe, you know, it's, I'm going to have to probably move maybe one of these bigger forwards into a backup center role. Um, you know, that's, that's a possibility. Um, maybe, I don't know. I really don't know who, who that would be though. I mean, these guys are maxed out. The Harriman is who I'm redshirting. He's the tallest uh, power forward, but man, he's he's only 191 pounds, so I think you need some uh, a little bit more bulk in there, brawn, however you want to say it, in the center position. So we're in trouble inside, more so than last year, because even though that was our weakest position in that starting lineup, starting rotation, however you want to say it, um, Anderson was like a two-and-a-half star rated center, and he actually did pretty well over the course of a season. And even Holland, he 
did okay in, in backup. I mean, he got 14 minutes a game, six points. Uh, what is that? Total rebounds a game, just under three. Uh, so you double that, you know, and he's looking at maybe pace for 12 points, six rebounds, something like that. A uh, couple blocks um, a game. So, you know, he's he wasn't too bad in relief or uh, – off the bench last year. I'm, I'm talking baseball terms. I'm sorry. Uh, but I, I still would not really, I'd, I'd like a better starter. I mean, Holland is still, I think the guy who needs to be backing up. So it's, it's just, it's, it's a mess really. This is the, um, this is definitely where the challenge is, is going to start up. Another thing I wanted to look at because I talked about it last episode and I was scrambling, couldn't figure it out. The history has populated, and it's populated because when I was in that last video, I still hadn't got to the to the actual new season yet, where my new roster players were coming on, the old ones were moving off. So now I do have the player history, um, and I can look at all-time uh, records here now. So if I looked at career, I can look at career um, three pointers made, for instance, and I know that Milton Grower, who who is senior, who left, um, he's currently, at least under my tenure, he is the record holder. So that is kind of cool. Um, and then it'll show you who's active. So you got a guy like Jepson, Marshak, Cunningham. Uh, they may be able to pass him this year if they have a good season. Um, let's see rebounds. How about that? Total rebounds for the career. Marnie Anderson with rushing. Jepson, an active player. He, you know, he might he might catch him uh, this year and be our all-time rebounder under my uh, under my tenure. Uh, let's see. I guess if you did career, I don't know if you can do career like. Like points per game, that would be something I'd like to see. I mean, I can look at points, but can I look at points per game? I mean, a single game point record, that's kind of cool. But I'd really like to see points per game. Not seeing that. But... It is nice that there is a history, kind of an almanac kind of thing built in. I'm liking that. And uh, you can look at your all-time win-loss record as well against certain teams. Uh, Belmont, I'm liking that, 2-1 against them. Uh, but uh, that was the other thing I was going to show you. And then mainly just going to go into the – well, one other thing. Sorry. There was a video that was out. There's a channel, I guess a new channel on YouTube, GM Games. Uh, looks like they're doing kind of something similar to what I'm doing there kind of taking a look at sports management sims. They had a pretty good video on their channel uh, just released, I guess, this week about strategy uh, in this game. It's definitely more informative probably than I'm going to be. So if you want to give that a chance, it's uh, GM Games. You can probably find it if you do if you do a search on YouTube for just draft day sports, college basketball. But um, one of the things he had talked about is when it comes to your depth and strategies and things like that and your training practice plan, um, I've kind of done a little bit differently than probably what he would have suggested, the, the guy who did the video, but um, I moved it around a little bit. So I'm trying to get some kind of easier offenses or what I think would be easier. So five out just for, for you know, some of those guards who are probably going to be my strength this year so they can get some... Uh, Get some outside shots, outside looks, whatever, uh, during the course of a game. So I'm going to be focused on, in terms of end game, th this is probably how, when I go with an offensive set, this is probably how I'll start out. But I'd like to even minimize it further. So one of these will probably, one if not two, will probably get moved out. I think motion is still a good offense, just to give you an idea of what motion is. It's, um, it's a basic offensive set. It's... You know, it's a lot of movement by the guys without the ball, 
and then you got your guards and your small forwards again guards and small forwards are are the strengths on this team they can uh, roam outside you know look for kind of a uh, shots good shots maybe in the paint or the perimeter and then they can cut to the basket as well I think that's going to be where I'm going to get most of my points um, so motion would be my primary go-to when I'm using an offensive set if I had my way but I want to kind of balance it at least for the first part of the season give some other looks here like the high post same deal with high post you've got guards who are going to be playing kind of in the uh, what do they call it here the langs um, so you're basically going to try to draw the big men away from the basket, and then you know your your uh, guards, small forwards, forwards I guess can maybe cut to the basket behind them, um, or post up. But I'm hoping that that'll be a good offensive match for this team. Shuffle, eh, I don't know about that. I think again, it works with best with guards who are comfortable in the post, so that's kind of why I'm going with it. But I don't know if that one would be harder to study and maintain. Uh, the guy on the video also um, suggested triangle because it's kind of a it's a, kind of a basic offensive set. You're basically overloading one side of the floor and uh, trying to get a one of your I guess guards maybe or forwards in the post to get a good look. Good shot. Um, it's traditional because your big guys stay around the basket and your guards kind of roam more outside. So I could have gone with that. I think another suggestion that he made, which I thought was a good one too, is, you know, with me having so many freshmen now on this team, you want to stick to a basic offense for the most part starting out um, so that they're not overwhelmed. But you also want to if you're looking at a long run with this team you know like if I plan on being here two three more seasons if you if you have a team that matches up well with one of these offenses even if it's something that maybe like a Princeton or something that's a little bit tougher to to nail down you want to start training them early or practicing early so that by the time they're juniors and seniors they're going to be proficient in that offense um, so good suggestions I really recommend that video I won't, I won't go too more in depth with it here but once you set your offense I will say one more thing um, you want to set your strategy first I believe and then go to your practice plan because once you've saved your strategy it automatically fills up your um, practice plan and gives you the usage percentage for your sets and then you can go ahead and allocate the practice time accordingly so you're gonna have to and you're gonna have to you're going to have to allocate it based on defense and offense. So you got 100% practice time to use. You're going to have to put some percentages to the defenses you're going to run as well. It's not just 100 offense, 100% defense. You have to balance it between the two. So um, we're going to at least start out practicing those four offensive sets and some basic zone uh, attacks, 1-3-1, one, 1-2-2, one, one, two, two, and then mostly man-to-man -man on defense. A little bit of 1-2-2 two, two zone. The 1-2-2 two, two zone is what I used uh, defensively. I mean, I was using it almost the whole game in those two wins against Belmont. And it could be a fluke. I don't know. I mean, I'm not as knowledgeable about basketball to know how that impacted Belmont's game, but we won both those games, so I'm, I'm – Gonna try to uh, use that some this year as well. So, with all that said, I think um, it's time to start looking at recruiting. And I know I mentioned last episode that I was gonna try to buy more reports this year. When it came down to it, I just kind of chickened out because I didn't want to get overloaded on the budget. I wanted to be able to devote what time I had to uh, these. Um, um, you know, three star and above recruits, and I think you have to hit them early and you have to hit them often, and uh, so that's. I think that was the best plan for me this year is to just stick to the uh, one region and just mainly, I guess, just be pretty proactive with it. Um, there's some guys here, obviously, we're not going to get. 
I unless this Shamel Singletary really wants to play close to home, he's he's in Memphis. Um, I mean, I can't imagine this guy's numbers out of high school. Just look at that. I mean, twenty six point two points a game, fourteen rebounds, six blocks. Oh man, this guy would be. He would probably be. Um, you know. He would be your best player as a freshman for sure. But one of the things that I'm, I, I know he's going to get interest from a high, um, a much higher prestige school, and he's got a high GPA. So I don't foresee him coming to a school like ours. But I may, I may give him a call. He's on my call list, and this is what you're looking at. Uh, these are not all the recruits from the region, but these are just some of the better recruits I saw. I put them all on my call and watch list, and how you do that is if you look at the full recruit list, you can break it down by position. So this is just power forward. And let's say Scott Masick here in Georgia. Um, if I wanted to put him on my call list, I would just hit, uh, I think it's B, the B button, and it puts him on both the call list and the watch list, meaning I can watch film, I guess, and. Uh, invite him to campus, do campus visits, do visits to his school, recruit him that way. But let's go ahead and I am going to, I think, primarily focus on two positions. Once again, center and point guard. I think if I look at the roster, I believe that's where still my, uh, my main <clears throat> problems are. Although, I don't know, I think just kind of kind of looking at this again, you know, as I was talking through that introduction, I mean, we got McKinnis, Jensen. If Jensen's a good ball handler, and he's not, unfortunately, he's a decent passer, potentially he could be a good passer. But if one of those guys, you know, maybe, I mean, he's good passing, decent ball handler. I mean, is it possible? One of those guys could play point guard. Uh, because at point guard, I've got Mike Ivory here, who is a potential three and a half. Great passer if he meets that uh, potential eight and seven ball handling. Not a good free throw shooter, but uh, pretty good outside shooter potentially. Good stealer, uh, good at stealing, discipline. Uh, so he could, he could work his way into... Um, a good three, three and a half star rated uh, point guard. And he's just a sophomore. So you've got McMillan, who has better potential passing. Um, ball handling is pretty good. I mean, the court IQ is not as good, though. I think, um, I think Ivory's court IQ is potentially a little bit better. You know, it might be that um, in Cunningham, is just a junior, and he's probably going to get most of the starting. Most he, he he's probably going to be number one on the depth chart, right off the bat. So he's going to be here for two years. So you know, I'm I'm starting to rethink this. Where I point guard, shooting guard, small forward. Um, I got Marshak, Jepson, who's one of my highest rated players those two guys are coming back potentially I guess if they don't uh, opt to go into the draft so power forward is really looking uh, worse and worse I mean Greg Laws um, probably going to be at this point the backup point power forward primarily the backup anyway on that depth chart He's going to be coming back next year, but um, I'm losing three three seniors. And Harriman, even though I'm redshirting him, and he's got some good ability uh, potential here in some areas, I think it's going to be a while before he, you know, gets that uh, meets that potential anyway. So I think I'm going to start out with recruiting, and let me see if I can do it now. Um, yeah, I think I should be able to call them, but let me take a look. So I'm going to go to my recruiting list, and let's go to the power forwards first, which was where I was, I believe. 
So that's the full recruit list. I want to look at who's on my call and watch list. Not many. Um, and I want to look at who's on t in Tennessee. So Singletary, Garner, Tony Hearns. I kind of like uh, Garner. I like his size. Let me just let me go ahead and call him and see what kind of uh, response I get. All right, so I don't know if I've shown you recruiting, so here we go. Uh, so you, you make the call. you got two categories uh, usually you can go with. You can go like pitch or general interest. This guy's already telling me he's not interested. So I'm going to, you know, you can hang up, wish him good luck, or you can give me five minutes of your time, see what he does. Not, so he's gone. Um, so Garner, probably out. Singletary, I would be willing to bet he's going to be out, but let me take, take a look here. Yeah, he's gone. Was he the one I called? Let me make sure. I don't think so. But was it Garner that I called or Singletary? Um, no, I think it was Garner. Let me try Maj Majerus. Once again, not interested. And I can't even get him to, to really talk to me. And so now last is Tony Hearns. And he's not going to give me any time. So that's that's unfortunate. Uh, let me try one more of these guys. Um, let's see, Ben Lopez. I'm going to try him. And he's not going to give me any time. All right, so that didn't go well. So let me look at the centers, which would be my next... Uh, round. So I've got a couple guys here who are already interested. Well, like four. So the the way the interest is rated, it's like none, cool, and warm. I don't think you can go higher than that. Usually if it's warm, uh, you're going to show up pretty high on their list. Like Travis Bryant, for instance. Uh, don't know anything about him right now, but I, I do like uh, where he's ranked. Uh, size is pretty good for this program, and he's a three-star that may not mean anything, but let me, I'm going to go ahead and see if I give him a call, what, if I can get any kind of, so here we go. There's three areas, but the never mind is basically just hanging up the call. So we've got a general information and pitch area. I'm going to look at pitch area. First thing I really want to look at is school location. This guy's in Florida, and it's very important to me, and it's a big factor in his decision. So I would really have to get him playing time, uh, I'll come back to this guy. So at least goodbye, coach. Thanks for calling. It's gonna it's gonna end on a good a good note there. Um, oh man, I'm gonna try him. Laval Johnson, 6'10", 251 pounds, two two stars. I'm 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 hesitant because the guy I recruited last season was a two star center. But let me go ahead and. Give it a chance. Um, so pitch areas. I want to know where he's located. School location. So he, he's not as big on school location. Um, let's look at team prestige. It's not a big concern to him. So already I got probably two things here that are, are going to be uh, in my favor. Um, how about conferences prestige? It's not a big concern to him. So... Um, Let me see if that gives me any, any, yeah, so, well, location is somewhat important to him, but prestige, not really all that important to him. So this guy might be someone I could work in my favor. And you can see um, those ratings are not that bad, at least I, I don't think so, uh, for this program. I mean, um 
ranked in the top 100 as position, right? So I, I don't know. I feel like that's not too bad. Regional in the Southeast, he's 21st in his position. I mean, I again, I, I'm really with a two-star prestige school here, even though the run we had last year I would hope would count for something. That's that's not too bad. Um, let's see if I can make one more call. Uh, is there a three-star in Tennessee? There is. Inyo Meeking, who has great size. Um, position rank is a little bit high, high, well, quite a bit higher than, than Laval Johnson. Not many rebounds a game, though. I don't know what that's about. But let me see if I can give him a call. And he's not even interested. So three stars and above, are, they're just not even give me time of day. All right, so um, I think that was kind of it for Tennessee. Uh, let me see. Is there anybody here? I think I did call him, didn't I? Yeah, and location was very important to him. Um, did I call Starkey? No. All right, so I think I am uh, out of out of ability to call right now. Um, yeah, until next week. So let me take a look here at back on the centers. Or did I do any in the power forwards? Let's see. Yeah, Jay Garner would not talk to me. I'm probably going to have to back up and look at some two stars when it comes to um, the recruits here. And I think I was there was a Kentucky one here, Gabe Betts, Ben Lopez. I mean, I can pretty much guarantee those guys aren't going to be interested. So let's um, let's on the center side. We did have some interest from I think it was Laval Johnson. I'm going to take a look at film on Laval and I can't believe none of those guys would even talk to me uh, Bryant um, I'm gonna this is probably crazy but I'm gonna go ahead and see if he'll come because if he does come to the school and likes it um, that could you know that could even though location is important to him, that could automatically turn his interest, put us up on the on the high list. Um, now, I didn't get a chance to look at point guards, and, and like I say, I don't think at this point, I really think I need to focus on power forward and center, but I wonder if Singletary, this is crazy, but would he come? Okay, he's going to come. Again, just to see. You know, if the guy will, will come, then hey, that'll be great. And then um, same with Garner, even though he wouldn't talk to me. Let's see if he will come. He will. All right, so that's that's my three visits for the week. Um, now, I want to watch film on Singletary, Garner, Jarris, and Hearns. And then back to the center. Um, I'm going to, I think I'm watching there, I'm going to watch him on Drayton, Hart, uh, Bryant, and Meeking. And I've got one left. Uh, who do I want to do there? Let's see about this Mississippi guy. No interest from him, but um, maybe I'll get a little bit more uh, information on him. So that's kind of how recruiting works. Um, one other thing I'll, I'll tell you too, the period that you're in up here at the top, that, that's really important. And if you go to, um, I think it's recruiting class 
no, I guess it's back to recruiting. Um, there should be a way to see the dates. There you go. So you click that calendar and it tells you the different dates that you're going to be in in recruiting and what they all mean, what you can and can't do within those particular periods. So um, for right now, we're in the quiet period. Recruiting just basically started and we can call, watch game film, host recruit, evaluate. We can do those things and also visit the recruit, watch them live, I should say. And then we go through a dead period where you can call, watch game film, back to evaluation. And then the contact period is when you can visit the recruit at home and host. So that's when a lot of things happen. If you get to that contact period, um, that's pretty much where you're, you're making your final pitches if you haven't already got somebody really lined up and on the hook. Uh, so I want to get to that period, hopefully with two really good candidates lined up. That's my goal uh, with the two scholarships that I have. So let's go ahead and advance. And this will, um, I think it moves me ahead to July 4th, so it's the next period. And already, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. So Taurus Bryant, who visited, is now already warm. Uh, so is Le Laval Johnson. So is Travis Hart. Um, Jay Garner's campus visit, he enjoyed it. So he liked the visit. Singletary, I can pretty much write him off at this point. He uh, was disappointed in the visit, so I don't think he's even going to be in the uh, running for me. Bryant, he enjoyed his visit, um, and he liked the program. Those are good things. So I'm glad I I'm glad I went out on a limb there. And uh, just last thing in the email here, it's time for the summer camps to begin. I think that's what we're going to be doing next. The summer camps are kind of cool because if you've got some of these guys that you're looking at and you're scouting um, especially now if somebody's got interest you might see the two stars even some sometimes a one star will have a good camp and then they kind of start looking a little bit better as a recruit so hopefully um, one of these guys I'm looking at um, will be have a good camp and, and impress me a little bit or whatever you know impress my scouts enough that they they move up in the ratings but stay interested in my team that's the cool that's the key so recruiting class now we got a couple guys here with some interest um hart richards in a point guard i, I didn't uh really take a look at the point guards this time around so let's go back to the centers. Now I'm interested in what Taurus Bryant, I'm interested in what that location, what, what it meant having him come. Because uh, going back to the email again, Taurus Bryant, he did enjoy the, um, he did enjoy that visit. So I want to give him another call. I uh, should have already watched film. I can, I can let me just because there's a few pitch areas I haven't covered with him yet. So, uh, playing time it's going to factor in, and I want to look at his parents because sometimes um, neither of them attended the school. Sometimes his parents can factor in to their decision where like if the parents want to um for instance have their kid stay close to home i mean that's going to be impactful but also if they were an alumnus of your school that's good too uh laval johnson i don't want to give him a call just yet but i i think did he not come already no he hasn't come to the school 
Whew. I like his. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna invite him to the school as well, just to um, to give him a chance. But I'm gonna really go back over to this to the Power Forge right now. I still have nobody interested. Although Jay Garner did have a good um, visit. Oh man, he, he would be a, a really good one to, to pick up. I like. I like his size. Um, good mix there between the. Uh, scoring and defensive numbers let me see if I call him what kind of response I'm going to get I'm going to talk about his parents as well oh, man when they when they start turning off like that it's kind of hard to to get anywhere so hopefully that won't be the case with him um, but I'm gonna have to start looking at a couple guys up here so we got Georgia Now, did I did I call bets at all? I can't remember. Um, I think I may have called Lopez, but we got some interest here in Gibson in Arkansas. Let me give him a dial. Uh, pitch areas, school location. It's his number one priority, so you can almost kind of bet that he's not going to come here. But it's that's not a big concern, so that's good. So. At least we know that much about him. Um, and then this other one from Georgia, he's got some interest, so I want to I want to try to follow up because he is three stars right now. So let's see. Pitch areas right away. I'm going for school location. Wow, you just you just picked up the phone. You're already tired. That's that's crazy. Um, so I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna watch film. And then watch film on him. Um, I think I'm going to scout Jay Garner live. I would really like to get this guy interested in the school more. Um, again, I like his size as a power forward and that three-star rating a little bit better. He's pretty decent in GPA. Uh, he would be somebody I would m really like to pursue. But... If I don't get any movement in some of these guys, um, I'm going to have to start looking at two and above and moving some of these guys off the list. Like Singletary, I can remove him from the from the list. Just simple highlight, hit R to remove. Lopez, did I dial him? I can't remember. We're just going to go ahead. Uh, five minutes of your time. Okay, general information. Let's talk about your parents. Uh, Never mind. Gosh, that was a waste. Um, I don't think I had a gay bets call, but Lopez, you know, he's cool. Uh, let me see if he will come to the school. He will. Um, I don't really want to. I'm going to watch film on him as well. I don't really want to invite these guys yet. So I'm watching him live, Garner. He's scheduled to be watched live. Um, maybe I should watch. No, he's coming. He's going to be coming to the school. So, hmm, did I call Stanley Oliver? Let me see what I can get from him. He may not be interested. I mean, Mississippi. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove him. I don't think I'm going to have any get any interest from him, honestly. Uh, bets. Did I call him? I can't remember. Nope, I can I can remove him. I don't really like his size either. Uh, 6'6", 195. Maybe I'm just being too picky on that. But uh, Alabama, did I call him? No. So at least I'm going to remove him off the list. So we got Gibson... I'm going to watch film. Hampton, I'm watching film. Lopez, he's going to be hosted. Garner, he's already been. Now I'm going to be watching live. All right, back to the centers. Um, I think I'm going to do this. He's scheduled to 
to visit. Travis Hart. I'm going to watch film for now. Uh, and let's look at, you know, let's, let me just, I can't dial anybody right now, so that's probably going to put it out. Uh, I can host a recruit, but he's scheduled Travis Hart, Inyo Meeking. Let me see if he will come. Again, based on kind of what I did with Bryant, maybe he comes, has a great, and he's, he's willing to come. Maybe he has a good visit, and that helps uh, put us on the list. But that's how the recruiting is going to work. I'm going to do a lot of this offline because I know it can get um, – take a lot of time really if you and I am wanting to focus on this because it's so important especially this year but uh, what I'll probably do is I'll go pretty far into this at least until we get to the point where um, we're closer to the start of the season we're not we haven't even done schedules yet uh, we are going to be doing the camps next um, I'll just go ahead and advance just to let you see at least kind of what I'm talking about on that um, we do have heart now Drayton, uh, he, I think he's got some interest, but I'm just going to take a look at the inbox first. So the Georgia, we went to this camp, and Meeking was there. Um, and I don't know if they give me a review of it yet. No, he, he didn't really stand out at the camp. And he has very little interest in coming to our school. I kind of knew that. Bryant, he didn't stand out either. Um, who else was uh, Jay Garner? He didn't stand out. Um, Tony Hearns. Not many of these guys that looked like had a, had a great camp. Um, wow. Ben Lopez didn't stand out. Uh, now the recap here from the national camps, which we probably didn't have anybody. Uh, well, Singletary, he had a great camp. So, um, wow. So he's just somebody that I just can't get, obviously. But uh, And then they have the East Coast Jam, which I don't think we'd have anybody there. And this Georgia Superstar Camp looks like shooting guard, point guard, small forward, small forward, MVP was a small forward. So the Georgia camp, which is one that I was uh, really interested in, nothing much happened there. And I don't think I was even going to one of the uh, national camps, which I think I went to shows to go to two. Uh, but so far, not much happening there. Uh, and I'll do one more thing before I go because we did look at the centers. I'm just, what are the power forwards looking like right now? Still, yeah, not much. I mean, Garner's got a little bit of interest, interest um, but he didn't, he didn't have a great camp either, but he's still somebody I really want to work hard on. But um, if I can get a three-star recruit at each of these positions, I'll be really happy with this recruiting class. But uh, as always, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting. I uh, hope you like the series still. I'm really enjoying this game. Uh, I'm glad I found it. I think it's definitely uh, helped get me through missing the Final Four tournament this year, but it's also um, going to be, I think, on my radar You know, for a while. I'll probably keep up with uh, the new versions that come out. Uh, I like for a starting point for me into this game, this has been really fun. And uh, if you haven't tried it, you want to give it a try, uh, I'd advise you, you know, at least to try it. I think they even have a de demo program that you can download and uh, try it free for a while. Uh, but I've, I've had a lot of fun with it for the most part. Um, and really do hope you guys enjoy the series. But uh, I will take a break on this now and I will get working offline to do some uh, more recruiting and I will see you next episode. Thanks.